Hi all, I have a fascinating game by Jabava himself playing his Jabava system. So this is a very interesting novel system to have with the white pieces. This was in the World Rapid Championship of 2014. He was playing white against Shakira Mamajarov, one of the top super grandmasters in the world. So Jabava played d4, knight f6, and we have knight c3. So according to chess based line book, this is the fifth most popular uh, move in the position. It's a kind of novel move in many respects. We have so, some uh, references to it, referred to it as a kind of Shigorin, uh, Queen's Gambit Shigorin variation. The Shigorin with black is knight c6 after d5, so it's, it's like Shigorin reversed in a way as well. So d5 was played, bishop f4, bishop f5, f3 and this is like playing the Italian game on the other side of the board so this bishop is uh, going to be kicked and sometimes maybe this bishop could even go onto this diagonal in the Italian game um, there's c3 d3 and b4 and a4 and stuff like that so you can see similarities we have e6 g4 bishop g6 h4 so threatening to squish the bishop with h5 black plays h6 e3 and now c5. And you might think, hold on a sec, knight b5 actually uh, looks quite crude and dangerous, knight b5. And in fact, uh, if you looked at the actual threats in this position, knight b5 here isn't so good. If white had an extra move, knight b5 wouldn't be so good in this position. Um, you know, as an example, uh, after knight a6 and white does something, Black could play c6. That's the key thing to drive the knight back. Uh, but it becomes more lucrative, it seems, uh, when c5 is played, because then there's no c6 after <clears throat> to kick this pesky knight. Uh, and quite often in this position, a6 is played to prevent knight b5, to prepare c5 without knight b5. So, for example, this has been seen quite often, and black's thought to be absolutely fine there. Uh, so that a6, uh, an interesting prophylaxis move in this particular position for c5. Uh, on bishop e7, um, uh, sorry, as an ex another example, the knight just gets kicked back, say c3, and the knight gets kicked back. Black's doing fine there as well. So that shows, yeah, it's interesting, the nuance here, that knight b5 is potentially quite useful here. But first h5 was inserted, <clears throat> and now knight b5. And after knight a6, you can see this is a happily uh, perched knight here without being kicked for, by c6. And in fact, c, c3 deprives this knight of the b4 square and, and generally the b4 square. Bishop e7, and we have a kind of London system on steroids here with the, the king side pawn advances, but with a knight on b5. It's a very interesting scenario. Bishop d3, bishop takes, queen takes, knight d7. And now we have... Uh, so black didn't routinely want to castle, perhaps concerned about g5. So knight d7 puts the brakes on g5, and in fact introduces bishop h4 potentially. Knight e2, not, not being concerned here about bishop h4 check. Black actually castled here. Um, on bishop g5, this is interesting, there's knight d6 check. Yeah, the king in the center, that's, that's devastating. That'll be a devastating mistake for this rapid game. And in fact, this is quite amusing, I thought. The queen could actually do some spring cleaning of the black position with, with checks, winning lots and lots of pawns. Uh, so, for example, like that, and coming back, and that would be just great for, for white. Uh, but anyway, no, the king in the center, try and avoid doing active operations in general. So, uh, black castled here. We have a4. Uh, bishop f6 which leaves a kind of weakness of the last move. It does neglect d6, and that's pounced on like a cat's bishop d6. So I'm a fan of, of that in the faster time controls, pouncing on uh, opportunities like that. Rook e8 was played. On c4, this is mostly harmless. It just releases the tension in the center, and generally against the London system, you have to be wary about playing a move like this. Uh, by releasing that central tension, the check is, is harmless here as well. It seems, you know, white could build up an attack like this, for example, uh, and even sacrificially just blast uh, through the g-file, so as this shows, some of the dangers. So you have to be wary of a forcing move like c4. Sometimes forcing moves are just terrible. Um, now, uh, check 
is again it's mostly harmless king f1 and and bishop f4 for example this position uh, with the knight coming to d6 again c4 is not such a good idea what well, is just doing quite nicely there uh, with prospects of an attack later uh, so anyway rook e8 we have f4 clamping e5 and also preparing g5 so uh, yeah two squares has, have been influenced pushing for g5 clamping e5 that's very nice knight b6 uh, you might want to check here the king might go to d1 here uh, and then for example g5 breaking trying to break through and this is um, kind of dangerous this kind of g file action uh, but it with with accurate play actually black uh, should be have a dynamic quality so yeah bishop h4 check is is a bit of a nuisance move here actually so yeah maybe it could have been played knight b6 and then we have g5 so ruling out clearly bishop h4 check and trying to shred open uh, the king side h6 so this is a fun attacking position to have we have g6 if uh, g takes rook takes uh, this position uh, offering the exchange but uh, yeah it's just devastation absolute devastation uh, if the bishop dropped back then there's queen h7 is checkmate the bishop's covering the escape exit f8 so um, g6 fg bishop takes check and in this position yeah king g7 was played if king h8 then check is actually kind of useful for here knight d6 threatening knight f7 check it's funny how the bishop supports this knight d6 sometimes and here knight f4 with the idea of knight g6 is very dangerous so for example here knight takes and then taking and then queening uh, gets lots of material for white with a big advantage uh, yeah so yeah pretty dangerous position um, after that king if king h8 was played so we have king g7 check anyway f6 on bishop f6 again uh, knight d6 is a very interesting move to wipe out the rook to play h8 with greater effect so uh, here though um, in fact d takes is even stronger it seems and then knight f4 and in fact white could uh, get prospects like this on uh, for, for the attack this is very very dangerous Uh, yeah so okay so in fact uh, f6 was played knight d6 so this is a very interesting move indeed it's a very strong position here and uh, the mechanics on the g file are very interesting to consider knight d6 is one of a, a, you know a couple of other very strong moves I'm just retreating the bishop for example with knight f4 hitting that g6 is very dangerous and if we, if white gets this kind of position it's very nice attacking position also just knight f4 is dangerous with queen g6 in, in mind uh, so for example like this is uh, crashing through so okay knight d6 we have rook h8 uh, on f takes e5 instead then knight takes and h8 that mechanism to queen the pawn is going to be winning material uh, just run that through yeah black's getting a bit of material but and the knights are a bit of a pest but ultimately white ends up in the driving seat there so rook h8 knight f4 threatening queen g6 that's taken uh, here uh, it's just mating quickly if f takes after queen takes g6 and queen f7 okay so bishop takes f4 Bishop takes f4, g5. Yeah, things have gone clearly wrong for black here. The king's safety issue is major. White just cancels queenside. Just going to use that g file with great effect. Knight c4. Uh, in fact, there's a beautiful move in the variation here, a secretly beautiful move of the g takes. What's the, the most efficient move on the chessboard here? Can you spot it for 500 points? White plan win. What would you play here? The most efficient move possible. Okay, it's a real, it's a real beautifully uh, forcing, dramatic move. But there's actually, believe it or not, there's Queen G6 check here. So if King F8, Queen F7, and if taking here, then this is actually checkmate. The Knight's covering the F7 
escape exit. So a nice little chat mate there. Butter behind the scenes. So knight c4 was played. And now a really cute move anyway. Uh, so in this position, white to play, what would you play here? Really nice series of attacking moves now. Very instructive for any attacking players. White to play here, five seconds. To pause the video. Rook h6, supporting queen g6, that nice common square. And yeah, it's kind of a drag and drop because there's knight f7 on taking, but black did take. There's not too many uh, options here. If queen e7, you know, check. And in fact, here, bishop e5 is crushing. So for example, like this, uh, this is a really crushing position. Yeah, just winning the queen there. But what else is black doing? It's it's crumbling at the seams. Uh, you know, there's rook f6 to f7 if, if f5. Uh, this is just absolutely crumbling. Uh, that f7 coordination square, the knight that supports the knight. Yeah, it's so king takes offering the queen. And you might think, well, black's got a bit of material. Let's play on to see what happens. Maybe black was thinking. Uh, so the knight was kicked back there. Rook g1, rook takes h7, e4, king h8. On d takes e4 here, queen takes is strong. For example, just taking on e6, this position is going to be strong because actually white can play a, knight, a nice tactic in this variation using creating a common square. Can you see what white can play here? Another little tactical test. If you had this position with white, what would you play here? And it reminds me actually uh, the recent the recent <laughs> Wang Heo uh, victory in Isle of Man had a sort of common square similarity here to this you know cooperating the queen and bishop okay white can play bishop d6 here cooperating on f8 and if taking them we would just win that rook and then it's going to be easier for white to, to win from there so um anyway king h8 was played and we have actually really a great efficiency attacking efficiency again being demonstrated here so many people would just move the bishop, would you, or would you play something else? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here, this is a real attacking masterclass in action. What would you play here? Okay, no time wasted moving the bishop. E5, just offering the bishop, trying to crash through that G file after taking. Well, one else, black's crumbling. Uh, so we have queen G6. Threatening the lethal queen takes f6 mating. Black defended that for the moment, but e takes, and there's really no defense here. The game actually ended here. Memajorov had to resign this position. The two knights are pretty helpless here on that side of the board over there. If rook f f7, then there's queen g8. Checkmate, thanks very much, giving up g8. If rook h f7, then queen h6 check would drag the rook back and undefend the other one. Uh, if knight c7, then Killer move here is f7, threatening queen g8, which will be mating, or queen f6, either will do. So that's over there, yeah, or queen f6, if you prefer. Uh, so, yeah, I'll take you back to where the game ended. Uh, so, that was a, a very, very interesting game. Uh, Behind the scenes, yeah, some nuances about playing c5, how it's sort of punishable with knight b5. That knight gave great opportunity for knight d6 later. The g file attack was was pretty strong in this game. The tactics were phenomenal, I thought. So Jababa is an attacking player. He has real attacking skills to be admired. Uh, so this is a really dangerous opening system, uh, which seems to catch Mamajarov off guard uh, somewhat and made it easy for white to attack on the king side. There's a free uh, short and sweet Jabava London system course on that King's Crusher TV link, King's Crusher TV slash Jabava. You might want to check out and train some variations on. And there's a, a great video there by Simon Williams explaining uh, a lot of the nuances of the Jabava system. Uh, so we're very, very instructive training material for free, all there if you want to check that out. Okay, thanks very much.